Today's episode comes to you courtesy of my amazing patrons. Once a month, patrons vote on what commander that they'd like to see in an upcoming episode. The commander that gets the most votes wins. And the commander that they chose for this month's episode is actually an Omega level commander. An Omega level commander is one that is incredibly powerful and is a massive threat. And this Omega level commander that they selected is Miracle Lord of Bones. Miracle is a 7-5 god that costs 4 white, black, green. It has as long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total, Miracle Lord of Bones has Indestructible. And whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it if you do create a token that's a copy of that card except it's an enchantment and loses all other card types. So first up, obviously some potential indestructibility on this commander can make it very hard to deal with it when you actually meet that requirement. But of course, more importantly, its effect is absolutely incredible. Essentially, instead of losing out on a creature when it dies, you get a second copy of it, but it's coming back as an enchantment. Now, this ability is not only powerful, but also very flexible, and you can take this deck in a lot of different directions. One direction might be Hate Bears, where you have just a bunch of creatures that are incredibly oppressive to your opponents, and then you have them die and become enchantments, and they're harder to deal with as enchantments. Another direction might be that you're going to abuse ETBs, because obviously you can utilize a creature for their ETB right away, and then by sacrificing them potentially with something and bringing them back as an enchantment, you get that ETB again. Now that's more along the lines of the direction that I decide to go with this commander, and more specifically, I decide to go in a landfall direction as well. When it comes to creatures that have ETBs that can help you land ramp, you can really use and abuse those with this commander. And of course, there are also creatures that we can utilize that have different abilities that help us ramp as well. And since this commander has such a high mana value, it's going to make it easier to get it out quicker to get even more value out of it. Now with this stack tech, I'm going to take you through different tactics to show you how this stack works and how we're going to win with it. And with those cards, every single card in this deck is less than $1, including the commander, making it a very budget-friendly deck. And as a quick reminder, if you're interested in this deck, there is a link in the description for the deck list, so make sure you check that out. And now with all that said, let's jump into it. So to start things off, we've got some different ways to ramp with cards like Diligent Farmhand, Sakura Tribe Elder, and Marasa Root Grazer. By paying one and a green, we can sacrifice Diligent Farmhand to get a basic land into play tapped. And then Sakura Tribe Elder, better known as Steve, does the exact same thing, but we can actually sacrifice it for free. Each of these are great at ramping us not only once, but again with this commander, if we've already got our commander out, twice because they're going to come back as an enchantment that we can then sacrifice again. So obviously a creature like Steve is incredibly effective in this deck, being able to sacrifice itself, become an enchantment that we can then sacrifice, so it's basically, what, two mana for ramp two? But of course we can ramp in a different way with Marasa Root Grazer, which has tapping me put a basic land card from your hand on the battlefield and tap return target basic land you control to its owner's hand. So again, we can utilize these abilities, whether this is a creature or an enchantment, it does not matter. And again, with our creatures becoming enchantments, they actually become a lot harder to deal with in a lot of circumstances because, well, you know, a normal board wipe like a Wrath is not going to take them out. On top of that, with being an enchantment, we can actually utilize these abilities right away as well, so if we have a way to sacrifice it, we might want to do that just so we can ramp really quickly. Or again, its second ability can be fantastic at bouncing basic lands back to our hand so we can get even more landfall triggers. Because, of course, we've got even more creatures that can get lands from our hand into play with Sky Shroud Ranger, Land of War Scout, Scale Herbalist, and Walking Atlas, which all essentially do the exact same thing. Tap, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. And again, whether these are creatures or enchantments, it does not matter. Well, in a way, again, they're better as enchantments because we can activate them right away, or again, we can activate them essentially a second time in a turn if we tap activate them as a creature, sacrifice them to come back as an enchantment that is untapped, and we can tap them again. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to ramp incredibly effectively and incredibly quickly with this deck, and we're just getting started. Because next up, we've got some fantastic ETBs on creatures with Farhaven Elf, Topiary Stomper, and Yavamite Granger. Each of these essentially have the ETB, search your library for a basic land, put it into play, tapped. Now on top of that, Topiary Stomper is actually a 4-4 Vigilant Plant Dinosaur, which is a thing, and it can't attack or block unless we control seven more lands, which of course is going to take us absolutely no time to get to. 
And then Yav Mike Ranger actually has Echo, which is usually a bad thing, but it is not in this circumstance because, well, if we don't pay that Echo cost at the beginning of our next upkeep, we have to sacrifice it, which again allows us to get that ETB again. At least I should say when it is utilized with our commander and it comes back as an enchantment. Regardless, of course, we're not done with ETBs just yet. We've also got Elvish Rejuvenator, Spring Bloom Druid, and Psalm Simulacrum. The Rejuvenator has when it enters the battlefield, like the top five cards of your library, you may put a land card from among them on the battlefield, tap for the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. And then Spring Bloom Druid has to sacrifice one land to go get two basics into play tapped. And then Psalm's ETB is that it gets us one basic into play tapped, and when it dies, we get to draw a card. So again, sacrificing this has an additional benefit on top of getting that ETB again thanks to our commander. Next up, we've got some more specific ramp creatures with Wood Elves and Yavimaya Dryad. Wood Elves is going to get us a force into play untapped, and Yavimaya Dryad is going to get us a force into play tapped. Or I guess I should say that it lets us put it under anyone's control, but yeah, we're picking ourselves. Now, as good as all these cards are in this deck, there is one in my opinion that stands by the rest, and that is the Golden Pig of this deck. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Jahira, Friend of the Forest. Jahira is a 2-3 human elf druid that costs 2 and a green, and it says tokens you control have tap add green. This is an absolutely gross effect with this commander. Again, our commander can effectively turn every single one of our creatures into an enchantment token. And now every single one of those enchantment tokens can tap for a green. So even just with some of the examples that we've seen so far, like, you know, a wood elves... That now not only ramps us on its own, but it also basically becomes a mana rock for us. Or kind of like, you know, an enchantment version of a mana rock. You know what I mean. Regardless, this gives us access to an absurd amount of mana right away. And again, even if this is dealt with, it just becomes an enchantment itself, which then actually can just tap for mana too. On top of that, we're going to get to plenty of cards here in a bit, but yeah, um, we've got plenty of ways to make an absurd amount of tokens, so this can just help us ramp even further than that. So for the many reasons that I have listed so far, and because this thing is absolutely crazy with this commander, it is most definitely the golden pig of this deck. But now that we've talked about ramp, let's talk about ways to actually utilize our commander's trigger whenever we want to. And that would be with free sacrifice outlets such as Carrion Feeder, Viserysir, and Woe Strider. Carrion Feeder is a simple 1-1 zombie that cannot block, but it does have Sacrifice a Creature, but a plus one counter on Carrion Feeder. Now, obviously, this can be a heavy hitter for us if we really need to sacrifice a bunch of creatures and swing out with this. It can't block, but who cares? But yeah, essentially, it being a free sacrifice outlet is the more important factor. Because even when this is an enchantment version of itself, and, you know, getting those counters on it really doesn't matter, we don't care. Just having a free sacrifice outlet in play is huge for this deck. Again, in combination with our commander, that essentially allows us to turn any of our creatures immediately into an enchantment token version of themselves. And again, that allows us to use ETBs or abilities again. And yeah, there's a lot of powerful things that we can do with just this one mana creature. So of course, we're also going to be utilizing Viserys here, which also provides a lot of value throughout the game. Sacrifice a creature, Scry 1. And while Scrying isn't card advantage, it is fantastic card selection. And of course, we've got yet another creature that does exactly that with Woe Strider. On top of it letting us sacrifice other creatures to Scry 1, it has Ventures of the Battlefield create a zero 01 Goat Creature Token. Which again, with Jahira, just a nice additional way to ramp even further if we happen to have Jahira out. But of course, we're not done with our free sacrifice outlets just yet, so now let's move on to Cartel Aristocrat, Demir Houseguard, and Sadistic Hypnotist. Cartel Aristocrat has sacrificed another creature. Cartel Aristocrat gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. This can be incredibly difficult to ever get rid of as soon as we turn it into an enchantment. Being an enchantment that can essentially dodge any kind of target removal is massive. Another well-protected Sacrifice Outlet is going to be Demir Houseguard, which is a 2-3 with fear that says Sacrifice a creature, regenerate Demir Houseguard. On top of that, we can transmute it for one black black, and believe me, there are plenty of fantastic tutor targets that cost four mana in this deck. Next up, though, an incredibly brutal and effective sacrifice outlet with this deck is Sadistic Hypnotist. It says, sacrifice a creature, target player discards two cards, activates ability only anytime you cast a sorcery. When this is in play, it's going to be incredibly difficult for our opponents to ever have any cards in their hand, except for the one card they draw on their turn. Because again, like I mentioned before, we've got plenty of creatures in this deck to sacrifice, and of course, on top of that, like I mentioned, we've got plenty of ways to make a lot of creature tokens as well to sacrifice too. And of course, on top of getting rid of our opponent's hands, we can also get rid of their creatures with something like Phyrexian Plague Lord. 
It has tap, sacrifice, Phyrexian Plague Lord. Tar creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. And sacrifice a creature, tar creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So this can either shrink or just demolish our opponent's creatures and completely get rid of them. And yeah, this is a fantastic sacrifice outlet to have, whether it's a creature or again, when it comes back as an enchantment. But how are we actually gonna get to all these awesome cards? So now let's move on and talk about some ways to provide card advantage with cards like Shadow Heart Dark Justicar. It has pay one in a black and tap and sacrifice another creature, draw X cards where X is that creature's power. So this is not only a great sacrifice outlet, but it's also a great way to draw a ton of cards throughout the game. Speaking of which, Nessian Wanderer is incredible in this deck, a 1-3 Satyr Scout that has consolation whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control of the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put it in your hand, put the rest of them on your library in a random order. Again, our creatures come back as enchantments, so this is going to trigger a ton of times throughout the game and get us a lot of lands into our hand. Obviously, this can help us hit land drops or ramp even further again with all those tap creatures that we talked about earlier. Next up, there's Rumor Gatherer, which has Alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, scry one of this. The second time's ability is resolved this turn, draw a card instead. And you're gonna see here in a bit that there are plenty of ways to ensure that we can hit this on multiple turns, not just on our own. So not only will this let us scry a ton, but also draw a ton of cards throughout the game. Moving on, we've got Grim Specs, Midnight Reaper, and Liliana Standard Bearer. Grim Specs says, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, draw a card. And then Midnight Reaper basically does the exact same thing, but also pings us for one. Now, one life for one card is no big deal, and it's a deal that I'll take any day of the week in Commander, but also we've got plenty of ways to gain life as well. Liliana Standard Bearer, though, has when it enters the battlefield, draw X cards for X the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. So, of course, we can flash this in for a great effect, but also, again, if we've got a free sacrifice outlet, we can just sacrifice a lot of creatures, sacrifice this, and have it come back to get its ETB again. And speaking of ETBs, how about Soul the Harvest, which says, whenever another non token creature enters the battlefield under control, you may draw a card. And then Harvester of Souls is kind of on the other end of this. Whenever another non token creature dies, you may draw a card. And keep in mind that counts our opponent's creatures as well. Next up, Smothering Abomination says, the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Again, with this stack, sacrificing creatures is actually a good thing. And of course, with this, it does not specify non-token. So if we sacrifice any creature, we are drawing cards from that. Speaking of which, there's Moldervine Reclamation, which says, whenever a creature control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. So this can gain us a lot of life and more importantly, draw us a ton of cards throughout the game. Next up, Rite of Harmony says, whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control this turn, draw a card. And we can flash it back for two green and a white. So this can be a giant burst of card draw, again, when we have creatures enter the battlefield, or, you know, when we sacrifice our creatures to have them come back as enchantments, this can just draw us a ton of cards at once. And finally, there's Skybind, which can provide an absurd amount of value throughout the game. It says, whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, exile target non-enchantment permanent, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. First up, our commander can obviously already be hard to deal with if we meet that requirement for it to become indestructible. But if we don't, all we need to do is sacrifice another creature, have it come back as an enchantment so it can blink our commander and save it from whatever we need to save it from. But of course, we also can utilize this to heavily abuse the ETBs of creatures even further than we already are. So for example, we can sacrifice a creature, have it come back as an enchantment, trigger this so we can blink a creature, you know, like a Wood Elves, you know, the non-token version of it, have it come back into play, and then get its ETB again without actually having to sacrifice it. Which then, you know, we eventually will to have it come back as an enchantment to get this trigger to blink something else. So yeah, Sky Buying can provide us an absurd amount of value throughout the game, and it's just an incredible card in this deck. That being said, now that we've talked about our plan, what are some ways that we can throw a wrench into our opponent's plans? First up, how about Eilie Eternal Pilgrim, a 2-3 with Death Touch that has pay 1, sacrifice another creature, you gain life ability, sacrifice creature's toughness. So although this is not a free sacrifice outlet, it is one that doesn't cost all that much and can gain us a lot of life. And more importantly, on top of that, by paying 1 white black, we can sacrifice another creature, exile target non-lane permanent, activate this ability if we have at least 10 more life than our starting life total. So obviously this can help us get to 50 or more life, and when we do so, this can be a fantastic way to just annihilate our opponent's most important permanents. Next up, Foundation Breaker can be a great way to quickly get rid of some artifacts or enchantments. When it enters the battlefield, we can destroy either one of those things, and it's got an evoke cost of 1 and a green. So when we evoke it, it's sacrificed when it enters the battlefield, so we get its ETB once, then obviously our commander is going to have 
have it exile and come back as an enchantment, and then it's going to do it again. Which, of course, we can essentially get the exact same result with Reclamation Sage. If we have a Sacrifice Outlet out, when it enters the battlefield, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment. So yeah, another great way to get rid of multiple things. Speaking of which, how about Angel the Ruins, which has, when it enters the battlefield, exalt the two target artifacts and or enchantments. And then Terastodon has, when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy up to three target non-creature permanents for each permanent point of a grave this way. Its control creates a 3-3 green elf and creature token. So in total, again, with their enchantment token versions of themselves, the Angel of the Ruins can get rid of four things, and Terastodon can get rid of six. But of course, we're also going to be running some board wipes in this deck as well to get rid of even more things like Cleansing Nova, Austere Command, and in Garrick's Wake. Cleansing Nova is going to let us destroy all creatures, or all artifacts and enchantments. Austere Command is going to let us choose two, destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. So each of these are flexible wraths that can help us out in a lot of scenarios. One wrath that isn't flexible, but it doesn't need to be, though, is in Garrick's Wake, which is going to destroy all creatures we don't control and all planeswalkers we don't control. And again, 9 mana might seem like a lot, but again, for this deck, well, we can ramp so quickly and so often that it's not going to seem like all that much. Moving on, we're also going to be running Admonition Angel, Doomwake Giant, and Thought Render Lamia. Admonition Angel has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you may exile target anomaly and permanent other than Admonition Angel. And when it leaves the battlefield, return all cards exile with it to the battlefield under owner's control. Now, this card can be used both offensively and defensively. Because, obviously, we can just utilize this to exile our own things, like, you know, creatures that have fantastic ETBs, to then get them again when we choose to sacrifice this and get them all back. But yeah, especially when this is the enchantment token version of itself, it's going to be very impactful at getting rid of our opponent's things. And speaking of impactful, how about Doomwake Giant? It has Constellation. Whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, creature response control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. This can make it very difficult for our opponents to keep any creatures on the board, because again, we just have to basically mass sacrifice a good amount of creatures to just take out our opponent's creatures by turning our creatures into enchantments. Which we can also utilize to take out our opponent's hands with Thought Render Lamia. It has whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under control, each opponent discards a card. Once this is in play in your setup, good luck to your opponents doing anything. Speaking of which, how about Sinner Haze Wretch and Barrington Medic? Sinner Haze Wretch has tap target player discards a card, place ability only during your turn, and put a minus one minus one counter on it to untap it. Thanks to our commander, this can easily go infinite. I mean, we can just essentially do this right away. We just put two minus one minus one counters on it to untap it, even though it's, you know, not untapped when it comes in right away, but we just want it to become an enchantment because then we can activate it right away. And then we can just keep putting minus one minus one counters on its enchantment version because those don't matter. It's not a creature anymore. Those counters do nothing to it. So essentially, we just get this in play, and our opponent's hands are gone. And obviously, then from then on, unless they can deal with this, they can't hold on to cards either. And then Baron to Medic, we can also go infinite with it has. Tap prevent the next one damage to be dealt to our creature or player this turn. And again, the minus one, minus one counter to untap it. So essentially, we can make it so that nothing we want to take damage takes damage. So unless our opponents can deal with the enchantment token versions of these, good luck to them. Speaking of which, a very effective card with this commander is Longblade Regent in 8 8 that it has. When it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch, and as long as you're the Monarch, permanents you control have Hexproof. Even if the Monarch is taken from us, we can get it back quite easily with this deck, and yeah, just by sacrificing this, we can actually get it back right away by this becoming an enchantment token copy of it and getting that ETB again. And then when we are the Monarch and our permanents do have Hexproof, good luck to them dealing with the enchantment token version of this. Again, they are going to need an enchantment board wipe to do that. But now that we've talked about protecting our things and dealing with our opponent's things and setting ourselves up, well, how are we going to win? <laughs> First up, we can train our opponents very quickly with cards like Zulaport Cutthroat and Cruel Celebrant. Zulaport Cutthroat has whenever it or other creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. And then Cruel Celebrant essentially does the exact same thing. Regardless, each of these are low to the ground creatures that can either be effective obviously when they're on the board as creatures themselves or again as enchantment tokens as well. And speaking of enchantments, well, there's Grim Guardian, which has Constellation whenever it or other enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. So now we're going to be draining our opponents just for our creatures dying and coming back into play as enchantments. But of course, we can train our opponents in a different way, even with Retreat to Hagra. Whenever a land enters battlefield under your control, choose one target creature gets plus one zero and death touch until end of turn, or each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So again, with all those ways to ramp incredibly quickly and incredibly often with lands, our opponents are going to be in big trouble. Speaking of which, we've also got a lot of other landfall triggers with cards like a Mary Angel, Spore Mount, and Maya Bredegar Protector. A Mary Angel has, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 1 1 white bird creature token with flying. And then Sportbound does the exact same thing, but it's going to be a 1 1 Saprolane. 
And then with Maya, on top of making a 1-1 white human warrior creature token whenever a land comes into play out of control, it's also going to be a fantastic anthem for our creatures, giving other creatures we control plus one plus one. So again, like I said, we can make a massive amount of tokens, and now with Maya, those tokens can hit even harder. Speaking of which, we've also got Retreat to Amaria, which has Landfall. Whenever a land enters Battlefield under control, choose one, create a 1-1 one, one white core ally creature token, or creature you control get plus plus one until end of turn. But an even bigger effect than this comes with Feldar Retreat. Whenever a land enters Battlefield under control, choose one, create a 2-2 two, two white cat beast creature token, or put a plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So this can not only make us an army, but it can also pump them and help us swing out freely by giving those creatures vigilance. And then, of course, we're also going to be running Zenikar's Royal, which says whenever a land enters Battlefield under control, create a 2-2 two, two green elemental creature token. Obviously, each of these can be very effective, though, at making us a massive army in no time. And speaking of massive, there's Rampaging Balance, which has whenever you land enters Battlefield under your control, you may create a 4-4 Green Beast creature token. So yeah, good luck to our opponents when we get things going with that. And of course, our enchantments and enchantment tokens can also help us out as well with cards like Ajani's Chosen and Archon of Sun's Grace. Ajani's Chosen says whenever an enchantment enters Battlefield under control, create a 2-2 White Cat creature token. And then Archon of Sun's Grace says whenever an enchantment enters Battlefield under control, create a 2-2 White Pegasus creature token with flying, and on top of that, Pegasus creatures we control have a lifelink. So yeah, a bunch of evasive flyers so that can gain us a ton of life, what's not to love? But now let's quickly go through the lands of this deck, starting off with Broker's Hideout, Cabaretti Courtyard, Riveteer's Overlook, and Obscura Storefront. Each of these are sacrificed when they come into play, and they get us one of three basic lands into play, tap, and we can shuffle our library and gain one life. So yeah, essentially each of these are going to be us one of our two basics, and yeah, they are fantastic ways at helping us get even more value out of our landfall triggers. Speaking of which, we're also going to be running Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap to sacrifice to get a basic land in a play tapped. And then Grasslands enters the battlefield tapped, we can tap and sacrifice it to get a forest or a plains in a play untapped. So again, more landfall trigger goodness. Speaking of which, there's Crows and Verge, Mirror Landscape, and Blighted Woodland, each of which can essentially ramp us and help us get even more landfall triggers. Next up, we're going to be running some Bounce Lands with Selesnya Sanctuary, Orza Basilica, and Golgari Rot Farm. They're going to enter the battlefield tapped. When they come into play, we bounce a land we control back to our hand, and they can tap for two colors. Again, these are great ways to get even more lands back into our hand to get back into play for even more landfall triggers. Moving on, of course, we're going to be running some mana fixing with cards like Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Ash Barrens. Command Tower can tap for any of our colors, Exotic Orchard usually can, and Ash Barrens can be cycled away for a basic land. So yeah, basic land cycling can be very effective early on in the game to help us out. And of course, finally, the rest of this deck is going to be made up of basic lands with, you guessed it, Forest Plains and Swamp. But now that we've talked about every single card in this deck, let's talk about the price. Like I mentioned before, every single card in this deck is less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck at an estimated cost of $30.80. And keep in mind, you might be able to save even more if you already have those basic lands, because those basic lands are being included at $0.10 cents a piece. And you might actually be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing heavily played and damaged cards, which of course need a home too. That being said, this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.